Hi, it's Friday, June 21st. We made our last video when Alberto was in the western Gulf of Mexico. It did manage to form barely meeting National Hurricane Center's criteria for a tropical storm, moved ashore in Mexico, brought heavy rain to Texas, Mexico, and Central America, and has now scooted off into the eastern Pacific and died over the Mexican mountains. There is another disturbance that is forming up over Central America, and we're going to talk about that moving into the western Gulf of Mexico, fairly similar to Alberto within the next couple of days. But we're going to start the video talking about Invest 92L off of the southeast U.S. coastline, which will be making landfall in the next 24 hours in southern Georgia. This is the weak system we've been talking about on and off for the last week. It is a circulation now, so it has managed to close off. You can see the closed rotation here, complete with westerlies on the south side. But you can also see that the circulation is exposed. We only have limited thunderstorm activity primarily on the south side of the center. You can see some banding trying to develop here with periodic showers, but they are quickly evaporating as they form, indicating the dry air mass that 92L is embedded in right now. This is some recon aircraft data measuring the winds around the circulation. Yesterday's mission couldn't find westerlies on the south side. Today they are finding westerlies, albeit weak, at about 5 to 10 knots. So we are getting a closed circuit of airflow here. So this is a bona fide area of low pressure with a circulation. And the only criteria that it really would need to meet to be called a tropical depression by the National Hurricane Center is sufficiently organized convection or enough deep thunderstorm activity for it to be considered a tropical cyclone by their definition. They haven't pulled that trigger yet. Remains to be seen whether they will call it a tropical depression and initiate advisories prior to landfall. It's possible, but it's not going to really be a big deal uh, because there's not that much wind with this. 30 to 35 mile per hour winds primarily on this northern side, so there's going to be onshore flow out of the east. On this side, the winds on the south side are pretty weak, as you saw from the aircraft data, and there are some scattered showers forming up in the bands on the north side and on the south side. So we'll have some rain, some blustery conditions. There are rip current advisories out along the South Carolina, Georgia, North Florida coastlines and some high surf advisories. That will likely be the extent of any impacts from 92L. No intensification is really likely here. If we look at the water vapor satellite image, we'll see that there's a big ridge over the southeastern U.S. right now, and this is causing some northeasterly flow to come down on the system, causing a little bit of northerly shear as this approaches shore, and in general it's been embedded in a fairly dry environment, and there is some subsidence east of Florida due to all of the convective outflow from the Caribbean, which is kind of moving northeastward and causing air to sink in the vicinity of the northern Bahamas and Florida. So all in all, not expecting much from 92L, but it will be moving ashore, bringing some disturbed weather with it over the next 24 hours or so. Moving on to the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, Alberto has gone. However, the Central American gyre does remain. A portion of cyclonic momentum has lingered, and so we still have southwesterly flow into Central America, bringing deep moisture and unfortunately more rain to the already soaked Sierra Madre region of Guatemala and El Salvador and southern Mexico, and heavy rains will continue over the next couple of days. That flow is curling around to southeasterlies over the Yucatan Peninsula and then brisk easterlies over the Bay of Campeche. So there is some cyclonic rotation that is moving towards the northwest again. This will feel a little bit deja vu because this is how Alberto originally formed. And models do suggest that an area of closed circulation and low pressure will develop in the Bay of Campeche again and move westward into the Tampico region of Mexico over the next couple of days. We can look at the GFS uh, moisture plot here showing the current setup. This is the mid-level relative humidity in coloring and wind in wind barbs. And so you can see the southwesterly flow curling around to easterlies. And so you can kind of see the area of rotation that's currently over uh, southeastern Mexico on the model. Over the next couple of days, you see it move up over the next 24 hours into the Bay of Campeche, and there is a closed circulation at the surface here. It is a little dislocated from the mid-level circulation, which is uh, farther down toward the south, so it's possible that this will be a little disjointed, a little bit sheared, and uh, models in general don't strengthen the system very much. It moves rather quickly towards the west, and we do see a slightly better organized circulation once it moves toward Town Pico during the afternoon and evening on Saturday. However, it really doesn't strengthen a whole lot on the model, and uh, by Sunday morning, or late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, we don't see a lot of intensification over the Gulf of Mexico. 
There's a couple of reasons for this. Most models agree that this system will not strengthen that much. There's a couple interesting things going on. Uh, we have the remnants of Alberto south of the Baja moving towards the west, and in general we have the western part of the Central American Gyre and its cyclonic momentum kind of propagating westward and forming the low pressure phase of an equatorial Rossby wave, and the high pressure phase is going to develop near and south of Central America over the next 24 to 48 hours, so you'll see this propagate toward the west, and so if you look at these wind barbs, there's broad cyclonic turning here, and then broad anticyclonic turning here. So we have kind of a trough ridge couplet indicating the equatorial Rossby wave. And this, this ridge part here shuts off the monsoon moisture supply. There was southwesterly flow rotating in to this spiraling cyclonic center in the Bay of Campeche, but that reverses to northeasterlies and shuts off the cyclonic momentum and the moisture source out of the Eastern Pacific. And that kind of chokes this off that's been on modeling solutions for several days. We talked about it in the last video, and it's a contributing factor to why this system remains weak in the Gulf of Mexico. Coupled with that, though, we also have uh, upper level conditions being suboptimal. If we look at Sunday morning here, uh, the system is centered east of Tampico, but there's this ridge over Dallas that is just sitting here, and there's this wave of subsidence coming down. These northeasterlies decelerate over the Gulf, depositing their air aloft over the Bay of Campeche and causing sinking, and also a little bit of wind shear here with this northerly flow kind of pushing the mid-level center down toward the south. So in general, these are suboptimal sub conditions environmentally for significant intensification. And uh, again, most models agree that this will stay weak, and it makes physical sense that it does remain weak. So again, this will be a rainfall story. We'll probably bring continuing heavy rains to Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and then near Tampico, around the time of landfall. So this is a look at the total accumulated uh, rainfall from the European ensemble over the next three days. You can see the Sierra Madre uh, area, big rain there, Yucatan Peninsula, and then Eastern Mexico also getting another bout of rain. They certainly don't need it after Alberto. So we're hoping that the damage is limited and the flooding is limited from that extra bout of rain over the next few days. As far as current systems go, that's about the extent of it, those two systems there. But if we're looking out in the future for any possible tropical trouble to close out the month of June, there is one little area that we'll just be keeping an eye on for the next few days. There's a weak tropical wave over the far eastern Atlantic. We haven't talked about the central and eastern Atlantic that much, but there is a trough axis here, a little kink in the low level flow. This is going to move towards the Caribbean over the next four days. So if you follow this in the model, here it comes, and it nears Trinidad and Tobago by Tuesday, Monday night or Tuesday, and then it enters the Caribbean. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because as it enters the Caribbean, it's going to continue uh, through the basin, and it's going to encounter fairly favorable upper-level conditions. This is the GFS six-day forecast, which for the moment would have the tropical wave near Jamaica, and it's underneath this upper-level ridge with dual outflow channels here. And this is a generally low-ish, low to moderate shear a decent environment and it's worth watching and some of the ensembles are showing possible formation of this in some of the solutions. There's a couple of red numbers here indicating deep cyclones forming tropical depression or tropical storm strength in the western Caribbean in about a week as the tropical wave moves into the Caribbean and under this favorable environment. So we'll keep a close eye on this. This is the European ensemble showing a slight signal. It's really a fraction of the members at this point. 10-15% of the ensemble shows this possibility. So just something to watch for now, but that would be maybe the next area to monitor over the next several days, but certainly no imminent threats from that one. So that's it for this video. This is Invest 92L moving into the southeast U.S. Minimal impacts here, but coastal rip currents and high surf would be the hazard to watch for there, and some showers and gusty winds will come with that. And then the second coming of the Central American Gyre bringing yet more rain to Central America and Mexico. And after this clears out in a couple of days, once we get through the weekend, we are done with the Central American Gyre. And hopefully we'll get some drier conditions coming for Central America and Mexico. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.